Hello, I'm Paul Lefevre, the Real Software Developer Evangelist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new Web Canvas control that's now available in Real Studio 2012 Release 2. Our example is going to be pretty simple. There's going to be a... you're looking at it right now. It's a, a simple web page with a field where you can enter some uh, values that are separated by commas, and then you click the draw button, and uh, the bar graph is drawn here on the bottom. Uh, you'll see that each uh, bar is given a different color. The uh, the value for the bar is displayed within the bar, and also you can add different values and the, press the button again. It'll redraw. Colors change, of course, and everything rescales appropriately. So I'm going to close this, and we'll jump right into Real Studio create a new web project. And this project's only going to have a single uh, web page, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that set up here. I'll give it a nice name. Bar chart page. And a title. And uh, we can add right here a label. and put our text that says what this is going to contain. I'll make it a little bigger. And then I'll add the text field right beside it and make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to give the text field a name and I'll just call it chart values field. And now we want to add the web canvas control. And this is right here as canvas in the uh, control palette. And then we'll just add it over here and position it, resize it, and then I'm going to lock it to the right and the bottom so that it uses up whatever space is available uh, in the, the web page. I forgot one thing. We need a button. Let's add the draw button here. and change its text caption. Alright, so now I'm going to double click on the draw button to get to its action event handler. And here is where we're going to put the code to uh, get the values that were entered in the text field. So first, I want a couple properties. I want a property called max value that's going to store whatever the maximum number is that was entered. This will be used for scaling. And then I want an array of all the values that were entered. Now the first thing is if the user hasn't typed anything, we won't run any code. We'll just return. And then to make sure that each time the button is clicked, we draw new values. We don't reuse anything that was previously entered. We're going to reset um, the array and the maximum value. And then I'm going to get the values that were entered in the text field, put them in a variable, and then split that on the comma to create a string array. Now we're almost there. The next step is to copy these values from the string array to the integer array property values. So the first thing we do is reassign max value to be whatever the first uh, value is. And then we loop through each of the values that are in the string values, append it to the integer value array, converting it from a string to a number, and then if the current one happens to be greater than the maximum value, then we set it as the maximum value. So when this is all said and done, the values array will have as numbers each of the numbers that were entered, and the maximum value will contain what the maximum value is. And then the last thing we'll want is the, uh, which reminds me, we need to rename our canvas. So we'll do that before we type our last line of code. 
This should be called bar chart canvas. Now I'll jump back to the code. And I noticed this because I wanted to type bar chart canvas here to call its refresh method. And I realized I had forgot to give the, uh, the canvas a nice name, so it was stuck as its default name of canvas1. And it's always a good idea to give your controls nice clear names so you know exactly what it is you're referencing. So this code on the button essentially is just initial setup information. It's getting the numbers that were entered, putting them into an array so that we can draw the values. The drawing all happens on the canvas and specifically in the paint event of the canvas. So I'm going to double click here on the canvas and then click on the paint event handler. You'll see the top parameter list there, G is web graphics. And uh, this is used for all our drawing. We're essentially going to use the G parameter value and call methods and use properties that are on the web graphics class. So the first thing that you want to do is actually clear the canvas so that our bar chart doesn't draw on top of itself each time it gets redrawn. And then I'm going to create a constant here for the width of the bar chart, of the bar, each bar in the bar chart, excuse me. And then I have a couple local variables. Bar position, which is going to track the horizontal position of the bar so that they uh, are drawn next to each other and bar height, which is going to be the actual height of the bar based on the value that was entered in the text field. And now I will put in the for loop here that is going to actually draw everything and we'll go through this. So what we're doing in the for loop is we're going through each value that's in our array of values. And first come up with a random color so that the bar color changes with each uh, value. And we calculate the height which is based on the perc the uh, we use it based on the percentage of the maximum value and then we scale it to fit the height of the canvas itself. And then we actually draw the bar. We started at the bar position which by default is leftmost. And here I'm subtracting the bar height from the actual height of the canvas so that it draws uh, from the bottom up rather than the top down and then I use the constant for the width and then the actual bar height for the height to draw. And the next steps here are going to draw the text. So we set the color to black and I increase the font size a little bit to 20 points and then draw string the value using uh, the format command to convert it to a string at the uh, current position, horizontal position, and then at the height that's a little bit below the top of the uh, the bar. And then we move the bar position over a little bit, the width plus a, a few extra uh, uh, pixels for a space between them. So I can go ahead and run this. Looks like we didn't make any mistakes. So now I can type some values here. Oh, 5, I'm going to put bigger values. Let's see, 24, 38, and click the draw button and you'll see that it went through one two three four five bars one two three four five values were entered 24 38 99 12 and 145 the bars all display the numbers that were entered and the heights look relatively accurate um, by eyeballing it and we can change the numbers and click draw again and the bar completely redraws itself. And this gives a better demonstration of the relative heights and how everything fits. And that's pretty much it. That's a quick example for how to use web graphics. And as you can see, it's pretty darn easy. Uh, be sure to head on over to the documentation wiki and take a look at all the uh, properties and methods that are available to you on the, uh, the web graphics and web canvas uh, controls. Uh, you'll particularly want to check out web graphics uh, so that you can see all the available methods that you can use such as clear rect and uh, 
you know, fill rect and four color and all those sort of things. They pretty much match very closely to what's available for desktop application development. Thanks for watching.